In the south of Siberia, where Russia comes together with Kazakhstan, Mongolia and China, people live in harmony with nature. In this issue of Russian life, we travel to Altai. The landscape is striking. Taiga, tundra and desert surround the snowy mountains. This diversity is shaped by the Altai mountain range that stretches for nearly 2,000 kilometers between two climate zones. So all kinds of nature lovers come to Altai, including paragliders. When I tell people I'm sorry for the lack of decent roads around here, many reply, that's fine, better keep it that way. We're fed up with driving on tarmac. There's nothing wrong with a little walk. Some come for trekking and hiking, others for fishing or rafting in the rivers fed by the Altai glaciers, for climbing or horse riding. This pristine Altai nature was cherished as sacred by nomadic peoples who inhabited these lands from ancient times. The local tribes, followers of shamanism, worshipped spirits they saw in the mountains, rivers, trees and everywhere in nature. The Altaians have always said that in every living plant there's a spirit, a soul, and for them that was essential. The locals still preserve some of this reverence. Though several areas are now being turned into huge resorts, most of the region remains untouched by civilization. The horse is still the usual means of transport and roads which are impassable for most vehicles. The word Altai comes from gold in Mongolian. The middle of May is the beginning of springtime in the Golden Mountains that bloom with wild herbs and flowers. People gather many of the plants and berries and use them as natural remedies. The numerous caves in the Altai Mountains are witness of this area's long archaeological history. The complex labyrinths of interconnected rooms and man-sized passages seem artificially made. In fact, remains of some of man's earliest ancestors have been discovered in these dwellings. But all these caves have been formed naturally by currents of water digging into the limestone layers in early geological times when this area was the bottom of an ocean. Today, the diversity of wild plants and the mild climate in the mountainous regions of Altai make it a beekeeper's El Dorado. The local honey is widely believed to be the most delicious in the country. There are no factories, no polluting industries for 200 kilometers around here. People always come to enjoy our honey and ask to reserve some for their return next time. We don't produce much, of course, but there's enough for everybody. Please come and enjoy some honey with us. As the spring takes hold in the Altic valleys, the mountain tops are still covered in snow. The Tsarkovka mountain rises over Belorica, the main resort town, famous for its healing Raiden springs. The summit of the mountain, crowned with stone monoliths of volcanic origin, has been the holiest place of worship to the powers of Altai nature. This place makes your soul rise and sing. All the troubles, all the pains are healed by these mountains. This is what makes them different from any other mountains in the world. That's it from Altai. In our next issue, we'll be in a Volga region, embracing two historical traditions and two cultures, Tatarstan. See you next week in Russian Life.